Hi everyone, Mayumo here again, and today we are gonna be doing another time lapse drawing video. Last time I posted a time lapse drawing, I just had some background music going on and just basically me drawing. But I asked my friends over on Instagram to see what they wanted in the next one. And I did a poll and majority of the votes went to telling people about my nursing life. We're going to do that today. I am not the best storyteller, so um, I'll attempt to tell my nursing story as best as I can. So to start off, yes, I am a registered nurse in Canada. A uh, registered nurse is a four-year undergrad program. And for me, honestly, I hated it. Um, <laughs> I didn't enjoy it at all because it just kind of felt like I paid so much money to basically teach myself everything instead of learning from the professors, you know? But the one part I did enjoy about going to nursing school was like all of the clinical rotations, which is basically all in hospital settings and hands-on first-person experience. Uh, in 2015 is when I graduated and I actually took a year off due to just like life reasons and personal reasons. I didn't jump right away into the workforce. 2016 to 2018 was when I worked uh, in a behavioral health unit. 2018 to 2022, um, I switched into intensive care unit or the ICU. And now 2023, I am a hematology transfusion clinic nurse. So to tally that up, I've been a nurse for almost eight years now. Um, I really actually can't believe that I've been a nurse for eight years, but yeah, like I said, I graduated back in 2015 and I didn't work right away. I actually took a break due to personal reasons. And at the time I was also just like, kind of taking my sweet time like studying for the NCLEX which is basically the licensing exam here in Canada. Um, I think they do it as well in the states but NCLEX is actually really new for us and I was the guinea pig year. I also took a break because I just felt like I missed out on the social aspects of being in school. I just feel like I spent a lot of time in the library and didn't really enjoy it. So I went back to school technically for my critical care course program that's i that's kind of where i knew i eventually wanted to end up basically from 2016 after i got my license i just i lived with roommates while studying to become a critical care nurse and eventually i started working part-time as an rn on a behavioral unit and i really did not know what I was getting myself into. I just wanted to get my foot in the door in this company so I just kind of applied to the first job that was available. In the behavioral health unit I worked there for about two years and I don't really know how I did that. I don't know how I did it because patients in behavioral health unit, um, well just the the name of the unit itself is basically their behavioral um, due to dementia so sometimes they really just did not have the capacity to control themselves in their thoughts in their sayings and actions and kind of like if you know anything about dementia whether it's your family member or you've come across it as at work if you if you were a nurse as well it's hard because dementia is just like an umbrella term for a huge array of diseases that affect the brain. I'm just trying to explain this because I feel like when I say dementia, people right away think of like, you know, the notebook where that girl, the main girl, kept forgetting her man's name. And that's just, that's Alzheimer's. Like as you, you start kind of forgetting things, having like poor short term memory. Dementia is just like so much bigger. Because I worked in this unit, I had many instances while working there of being hit, cussed at, um, stepping on doo-doo by accident, and all of the works. I remember thinking of being in that job and being like, 
what did I get myself into? You know, I was so young and new, I didn't really care about anything as long as I got my paycheck. I actually have a funny story, like while working in behavioral health, I was uh, helping my co-worker at the time. We were changing a patient. I just had my lashes done that day and <laughs> this patient kind of was like, just randomly got angry and punched me in the eye. And I was like screaming, I was like, oh my God, that hurt. But then I was like trying to assess the damage. Oh, actually it's not that bad. And then I had taken my hand away from my face and I, I looked down and like all of my lashes were like in my hand. And I was like, oh my God, they just punched all my eyelashes out. So yeah, I had to explain to my lash lady the next day. Um, so I worked there for two years and honestly, after working there, I realized that I had no practical skills other than being like a leader because I was always charge nurse providing hygiene care to the patients i i really did not know anything like i didn't know how to put an iv in i didn't know how to put a catheter in i didn't know how to work on an iv pump like i i just didn't know anything when i did my self-reflection on that i was like okay it's, i think it's time for me to move on to a place that can teach me all of these skills that I need and want as a nurse. So where did I go? I went to intensive care unit. I was in the intensive care unit for four years. It doesn't feel like four years. It actually feels like more, but other people will probably be like, you were there for four years. It felt shorter. But for me, it felt much longer than what it actually was. Two years in, I've obviously just already finished my, my critical care course. So I switched into the ICU. It was like a huge, huge learning gap for me. Like I, I it was back at like square one. I, I didn't know anything uh, and I had to learn everything all at once. Um, but it was like super fun and I really liked it there. There was a lot of um, autonomy but you worked really closely with the doctors and the respiratory therapists, physiotherapists. And I really just enjoyed like the adrenaline rush too of like being in intensive care. We're the ones who had the code pager, which is basically like if there was a code blue and a code blue is like if someone's having a respiratory or a cardiac arrest, you're the ones to go to these to those units, perform ACLS basically, or advanced cardiac life support and all that stuff and i love that stuff i love that adrenaline rush but basically what happened is like covid hit and it was really really scary at first because you know when you don't know anything something is so unknown and then the news doesn't make it any better and you know everybody around is in panic when you don't know anything but I, it became routine almost like i got really used to working in that environment and when i try to talk about it now i really like try to downplay like that whole experience because that whole experience is like a big WTF like I I don't know how to explain it it's like one of those things you, you had to be there I don't know the news it seems like it's super exaggerated but it really wasn't it really was like I would say it's like worse than what you saw in the news because you can only share so much yeah I hate to say it but like that whole um covid experience did definitely like broke something in um i didn't know that i had to like have this huge wake-up call on like a a road trip like a random road trip with my co-workers slash friends it was so scary to like find out that there was like something wrong with you but you didn't know why where it would be like i'd honestly i'd like randomly start crying and i couldn't explain to them like what's wrong i'm like honestly i don't know i was just I was like crying randomly on this supposed to be fun getaway trip. That was like the wake up call where the, those friends that I went with, they were just like, you you are not okay. And I was like trying to fight it like I am okay. I, it turns out I was not. I just didn't, I think I didn't cope with the whole, like that whole situation, taking care of COVID patients and deal with those emotions. Then and there, what happened was I kept bottling everything. I didn't deal with the emotions I was feeling, but seeing death firsthand, you know, trigger warning, if it, this is not something you're comfortable with, like seeing death uh, firsthand is, is like a whole experience already on its own. Performing CPR, I mean, that was on the news recently when an NFL player had cardiac arrest and it was super traumatizing for them. 
I would like deal with that stuff like that it was normal you know because it is part of the job and you had to cope with it in some way and I guess I just didn't do it in a healthy way because it was like totally overflowing on this fun girls getaway trip the funny thing about being traumatized by an experience is you don't really know when it will come back um, if you say you didn't deal with it you don't really know it, it when it's gonna come or if it's gonna come right right away or it's gonna come later and basically for me it just came later there was like this instance um during this road trip where i was the one driving we were driving down this long or road in the city and there was a bunch of street lights i don't know why but you know usually street lights in canada they're usually far from each other but these ones were like so close they were all green they were all like green lights it's like a tunnel of green lights and i'm driving and i'm looking down like this road as i'm driving and i'm i'm like screaming i was like oh my god guys why is it all green and i was like getting triggered we were laughing but i i tend to like laugh a lot when i'm panicking i saw all of those um green lights it actually triggered being at work <laughs> during covid which was when someone was really really sick you 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 give a lot of medications you, we were giving tons and tons of um medications to these covid patients when you give all of those medications you are using an alaris pump and the alaris pump when an iv medication is dripping through them there's like a green light at the top you have a bunch of them you'll just see a bunch of green lights in the room as an icu nurse you look in a room and you have a bunch of green lights you know that person is not doing well and i think that is literally what i was triggered by i was like getting reminded of work everything that scared of or like traumatized by uh, and it was getting triggered by a bunch of street lights that were green that was weird i was kind of just trying to accept the fact that i was burnt out and i didn't want to accept that fact at the time i was like oh my god six years into nursing like how could i possibly be burnt out like i'm a young nurse should be more resilient but i was i guess i was just burnt out and i didn't want to admit that and when i finally did well it definitely took a load off being burnt out is like i think people don't understand when it comes to nursing like all of the things you come across there's a lot of moral injury some of the things that you're going to be seeing as a nurse is just it's gonna go against a lot of the things you value the things you believe in and you kind of just have to like brush it off because you want to um follow someone else's wish or you want to follow that patient's wish but it, it doesn't it's still there like the injury is still there it's like it's like you get punched it still feels a little sore sometimes it'll go away sometimes you'll be bruised and sometimes your arm is probably completely broken um, that's kind of how i see like burnout so when i realized i was burnt out i had to leave the icu and that made me really sad actually to have to leave like a place that i always saw myself staying in and, um, basically once i realized that i was burnt out and you know just feeling complacent and being where i was in the icu uh, this is when i started looking for my other job and this is my new job now which is i'm a hematology um infusion clinic nurse is the best way i can describe it i knew that i had to do something because i was starting to feel complacent in my job and i i am kind of like i was really sad about it because you know i went back to school to do critical care because i knew this is kind of where i wanted to end up like this is what i wanted but it just didn't work out for me because like it really just opened my eyes the whole covid experience working there and it just exposed everything about the realities of like healthcare to me you know the realities of being a nurse for a long time i would look up to my seniors and when i looked at them they were just so burnt out and you know physically injured and these are people i look up to both like as a person and as a nurse i i didn't want to end up <laughs> i didn't want to end up like them and that's like sounds really sad but that's just the reality of it like even when i looked at my mom who is also a nurse hi mom by the way yes yeah, she finally retired but like at, at what cost like, you're injured you can't physically move your back whatever you injured it back then it's supposedly healed but it just it keeps coming back to like bite you and you know, i did not want that for myself as a nurse so now after realizing all that and being fully awakened um you know, I now I'm working as a hematology infusion clinic nurse. It's a, it's it's basically it is a clinic job. It's outpatients, and 
I once again, once I went into this job, it was like I felt like I didn't know anything all over again because hematology is like a whole world of its own, a different specialty. So instead of like feeling super discouraged that I didn't know anything、um, when I was going into this job, I actually felt challenged. Really refreshing to like learn something new, something different. It was a while since I was excited about my career in, in nursing. I felt super guilty for leaving the ICU. I had such a wonderful team there of you know nurses who supported me, even doctors, respiratory therapists. You you become friends with your coworkers basically. They, they're the people you see the most. You see them more than your family for a while. And I'm still. I would say that I'm still dealing with these like emotions of like I feel super guilty for leaving them.、Um, Yeah, I can't even bring myself to like、um, visit sometimes. You know, at the end of the day,、like、you have to do kind of what's good for you and what you need.、Um, it's your life. You only have one. That's definitely something I learned working closely with death. And you gotta do what makes you happy. And it's very sounds very selfish. And I, I was like, you know, still dealing with the fact like that I'm sorry that I was so selfish. I'm so much happier now, like leaving the place that caused so much moral injury and distress. Burnout is real in like all aspects of life. You know, in order to deal with it, like you have to like reflect as to what's causing it, how you can change it. Like find all the things that you can change. You know, whether that's your diet, your exercising, your mind. Try to train it to be more resilient. If you can change the things, you can. Things will go really well. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but that's my、um, nursing life in a nutshell. Those are all the units I worked at, and I'm really happy where I'm at right now. Yeah, that's kind of it. My main focus is to basically work part time and try to do the, my art. And this is like this drawing is actually like a self portrait. Anyway, that is. My nursing life in a nutshell. I did not mean to get too deep, but what can you do? Sometimes your trauma comes out, and that's all. That's all I have today. Honestly, that was better than therapy. I am once again running out of phone storage, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. If you made it this far, make sure you leave a like, subscribe. Hit that bell button,、um, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Okay, say bye, Mia. Ow! 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 Ow!